Hello Houston! I am Jason Hammond and I am the Science Outreach Manager here at the Children's Museum Houston. I am inside the Chevron Maker Annex and I am here to show you a wonderful making piece called Nail Art. Let's have some fun right now doing some art and doing some making. So nail art is making and making is taking some available materials and using those available materials to make something that's personal to you. In this case, I made some of my nail art. I'm not done yet. I've made some of it. And my nail art is actually inspired by the abstract expressionist painters Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko. Some of you might have heard of Mark Rothko because of the Rothko Chapel that we have here in Houston. It's right next to St. Thomas University. If you haven't been, I suggest you go because he is a very, very important artist in the abstract expressionist movement. Now, Mark Rothko was very much about geometric shapes. And as you can see, my entire nail art is triangles and it's just interlocking triangles and triangles sometimes doubled up and sometimes laying on top of each other. Mark Rothko would do something similar. He would paint a square or a rectangle and that square and rectangle would be shaded in different gradients. What that means is it would start off dark maybe on the top and become lighter and lighter and lighter as you went to the bottom or the opposite or he might have done it right to left or left to right. That is what Mark Rothko is known for. Jackson Pollock, on the other hand, was known for drip art. He was known for being highly spontaneous in his painting. He would lay out a canvas and he would use a lot of physicality in his art. Like He wouldn't just paint in a traditional way like this. He would move his body around and he would splash his paintbrush and his art and make drips. A lot of people criticized him that, oh, anybody could do that. It's not true. Even though it was spontaneous, even though he was trying to be in the moment, he still knew what he was doing. He wasn't just saying, okay, I'm gonna put some yellow here and some red here and some black over here. He was like, I want yellow here because it helps the painting come to life. That is really important to understand that. He actually did have a plan even though it was a spontaneous plan. And that is a key principle of abstract expressionist art to be spontaneous. When I started my nail art here, I had no idea where it was going to go. I didn't even know if I was going to make triangles. It just ended up happening that way. And so, like I said, I sort of mixed the sort of Jackson Pollock physicality of winding and moving the um, yarn around and I mixed the Rothko by making all these geometric shapes. One of the key principles of abstract expressionist art is you can look at the art from many, many different angles. When you look at a traditional piece of art, really they want you to center on what they drew. So if someone drew a lamb or a picture of a car, they want you to look at the car. When it comes to abstract art though, you're able to look at it from this angle and you see something, but then I turn it and you're able to look at it from a different angle and you see something different. And I turn it again and you're able to see something different. This was very important to the abstract artists that if you went to a museum, you didn't look straight on at it, you would look at it from almost 180 degrees. You can't do 360 because you can't go through a wall, but you would do it 180 degrees and see what you see from all of those different angles. Another angle is you can look at it from this angle. You can look into it and see what you notice and see what you see. You can see the yarn laying on top of each other. You can see how the light bounces off the yarn. Everything within your nail art will also be special and artistic. Remember friends, making is fun, but at times it can be dangerous, especially when you're using a hammer. When you're doing the nail art, please be very, very careful when you're nailing in the nails. We don't want to eat smashed fingers, we don't want to eat smashed toes, we don't want to eat smashed hands. If you feel like you need an adult to assist you, get an adult to assist you. Also, when you first initially start to do the nailing, have an adult with you, a responsible adult with you, regardless. To do this nail art activity, gather these materials. Some kind of wood. It doesn't have to be as big as this. It doesn't have to be square. Just some kind of wood. You're going to need some nails. They can be all the same size nails. They can be different size nails. They can be copper nails. They can be aluminum nails. Whatever you want. Just grab a bunch of nails. 
you'll need a hammer, you'll need scissors, and you'll need lots of different yarn. But you also could use thread or anything that you can wrap around the nail. As I already told you, I've already started my nail art. This right here actually took me about an hour and a half to complete. So to watch me do a whole nail art piece would be a lot of time lapse, which is cool because you might notice in this video you're watching, we're doing some abstract expressionist things with the video, which is pretty cool. Uh, any kind of art can be abstract. Any kind of art can be experimental. And we're gonna do some of that, I, thought, I hope. It might be cool. But really what you need to do is you just need to grab a nail, any one of your nails, go ahead and put it in and hammer it down. Now, you can hammer it to any length you want. You can make it lower than the rest of the nails, you can make it higher than the rest of the nails. Depending on how you want to make your art, you can do whatever you want. And remember, this is making, this is your art, this is your expression. Do what you want. No one should tell you at any time what you're supposed to be doing. After you got a nail in, go ahead and grab your yarn. And you're gonna get a pretty large piece. You're gonna cut it and then it's all about wrapping at this point. So I'm gonna put it on this nail here that's already got some yarn on it. And I hope you all can tie knots because you really need to tie knots. So I'm gonna tie a knot there. I'm gonna tie another knot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around again. And then I'm gonna tie another knot. And then I'm gonna tie another knot. You really want to secure it on there. You can, if you want, use hot glue to, to secure them if you want, but um, don't use tape. Tape is just an easy way out. You cut the end a little bit, and then you're just ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get it onto the nail over here. I'm gonna wrap it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out. I'm gonna hold it stretched out. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna move this out the way, and then I'm gonna wrap it some more. And then I'm gonna do more knots. I'm gonna go ahead and knot it with this one here. So like I said, get really good at knot making because you really wanna do a lot of knots. Because if it's not secure, it'll start to unravel maybe over in this area and then you gotta go do a lot of maintenance, which I learned. Okay, now I'm gonna continue going but you might notice an interesting thing happening with the camera. I hope you had fun today learning about nail art and learning about expressionistic art. Now, when you create your nail art, you can do whatever you want. You can do more traditional art if you like. I actually have some more traditional pieces right here. I have a Batman symbol, which you can clearly see. And of course, someone was going to do this. They made a Texas state symbol, which you can clearly see. So you can do something like that. I just prefer abstract art, and that's why I did what I did. Now, I also want you to feel free to share your nail art on any of our social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, any of that stuff. We'd really like to see it. We love art. Art is such a good expression of self, and I really wanna see how you see yourself. So go ahead and add those nail art pictures so we can see what you did. Once again, I am Jason. I am in the Chevron Makers Annex. I am inside the Children's Museum Houston. I hope to see you soon, and I hope you have a really, really great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.